Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. The RetroArch you know and love just got a huge update, and with that update comes a feature you might want to know about. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, today RetroArch version 1.9.13 was released. We get a brand new feature and it's amazing, but before I talk about the feature, there is one thing I want to point out here. This will not receive the update on the Google Play Store version of RetroArch. If you have RetroArch sideloaded on your phone, then you're okay. If you have RetroArch or RetroArch Plus downloaded from the Google Play Store, you won't receive this update. There is a way to sideload it. It's very easy. It's also very safe and highly recommended. It's as easy as going to the RetroArch downloads page and just checking out the Android section. You can see it here in 64 and 32 bit. Now getting to the new feature, the new feature is automatic frame delay. And this is huge from a quality of life perspective. So they say the aim of this option is to lessen the burden of creating core specific and also game specific overrides for frame delay and instead go for a set it and forget it. So it's kind of a one option to rule them all and you don't have to worry about it. At a really high level here, the goal of automatic frame delay is to try to make your games as responsive as possible. If you haven't been manually adjusting frame delay or even tinkering with it in previous versions of RetroArch you've been using, well, automatic frame delay might really help you out here. Now on previous versions of RetroArch, if you go down into settings and then go into latency here, you can see frame delay by default is set to zero. There is also no option for auto frame delay. Now in the latest version of RetroArch, which is version 1.9.13, and you can verify this right in RetroArch, it'll tell you. Uh, if you take a look in the settings menu here and then go into latency, you can now see that automatic frame delay is there. And if you want to turn it on, by all means, just click it and turn it on. My favorite part about this is that it's a global option. It will apply to all of your cores and all of your games. If you're playing through your games and realizing things aren't as good as they were, well, you can just easily turn it off and you don't have to worry. On top of that, performance of automatic frame delay will vary from machine to machine, from device to device. It really will depend and it's a case by case basis here. The least you can do is just try it out, see if you like it. If you do, great. If you don't, just turn it back off. Now, automatic frame delay to improve responsiveness or reduce latency was not the only addition we got in this update. We also got some bug fixes and some core improvements. MGBA, my favorite Game Boy Advance emulator, got some audio fixes here as well as a low pass filter to help soften up the audio if you think it's too harsh. GBSP, another Game Boy Advance emulator that works great on lower power devices, just got a heck of a lot faster. And there's a heck of a lot more here that might take a little bit to go over in one video. So what I'm gonna do here is leave a link to this change log in the description below and I do recommend checking it out if you're at all interested. At the end of the day here, I recommend picking up the latest version of RetroArch on whatever device you're using it on, having some fun with it and trying it out. RetroArch keeps getting better and better and I can't wait to see what's next. Anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts on this new version of RetroArch in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.